So you mentioned last night that um, the movie was filmed in your hometown, yes. right? So how does it feel? Does it feel weird? Like, because is it a pretty small town? It's a small township. I mean, Pittsburgh is a, is a, is yeah. a big city, but uh, the South Hills of Pittsburgh, Upper St. Clair in particular, it's, I think it's fairly small. I think it's 20,000 maybe, mm -hmm. if that. So it was great, you know, to be able to, uh, and God knows I helped the location, uh, the location department, normally they have to find these places and I said I want to film in the theater where I first saw Rocky Horror Picture Show mm -hmm. or I want to film Luminaria on Christmas Eve on the actual street where I grew up. Um, with the restaurant thing in mind, um, when Charlie um, or Charlie's character tells Emma Watson's character about um, the restaurant uh, mm -hmm. by Penn State that sells stickies. Yeah, you old college diner that yeah. sells grilled stickies. Exactly. What are stickies? Are they real? They're 100% real, and you have to have one. You ever take a road trip, you ever find yourself in central Pennsylvania, you have to go to Penn State, you have to go to Yale College Diner, and you have to have a grilled sticky. It's like a combination of like, it's kind of a cinnamon roll, but it's not, but it doesn't have icing, it, you, you have it with butter. It's um, it, it's impossible to describe. It's like someone picked, figured out the best way to combine cinnamon roll, French toast, a donut. Both in the book and in the movie, Bill, obviously plays a huge part yes. in Charlie's life. Paul Rudd was fantastic, huh? Yeah, he, he really was. Yeah, he's great. Yeah, um, so you, you had said about how he was kind of reflective of your inspiration. Yeah, um, when, I was, when I was 17, when I was a senior in high school and I was applying to colleges, I got into a few and, and USC was one of them uh, there in Southern Cal. And Stuart, the day that I visited the school, Stuart Stern, uh, who wrote Rebel Without a Cause and a bunch of other great films, but Rebel is like his main uh, his claim to fame, he gave a seminar. And when you're a senior in high school and someone's going, oh, the day I met James Dean or when I was hanging out with Marlon Brando, it is more than impressive. <laughs> and I thought, I'm going to go here where this man is. That Bill gives Charlie, like the To Kill a Mockingbird and To Kill a Mockingbird, yeah. Are those influential on you? Like, They're you very influential, absolutely. Um, when I was a freshman in high school, uh, Mrs. Clark, our teacher, she assigned Kill a Mockingbird and she assigned The Great Gatsby. So the first two books that Charlie gets in the book and in the movie are those two books. And with the, the casting, I know you mentioned um, about how a lot of them just felt really right and you didn't even audition some of them. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, you know, the casting process was fantastic for us because uh, some people, Emma did not, Emma Watson did not audition, neither did Paul Rudd, neither did Joan Cusack, neither did Melanie Linsky who played Anne Helen. Mm -hmm. Everybody else auditioned, because I knew their work very, very well. Everyone else auditioned. So, because the novel was written um, as an epistolary novel, um, there were certain parts that were left out. Mm -hmm. They weren't maybe like huge parts, but there were certain parts that were left out or switched around in yeah. places. Um, what made you, like, what, why did you choose certain parts? You know, in, in adapting it, not to get too uh, shop talking on you, but uh, I, I've done a lot of adaptations in my career, and you're always trying to find the central, the central, uh, uh, the center of the story. Mm -hmm. It's like it's like the trunk of a tree, or, or you know, whatever it is um, that's going to have the same emotional impact or catharsis at the end, but without all of the the subplots and the tangents. Books, you, you have so much more room to have tangents and subplots in books. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about the music that was in the movie? Yeah, the music. Well, uh, yeah, we have a great soundtrack, I think. I think it's you really do. exciting. <laughs> it's really good. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to find songs from the 80s and 90s that, that maybe like people your generation don't know, but I had a litmus test. It, was, it couldn't just be songs that I grew up with loving. I had to, I had to pick them and I would play them for the younger people involved in the movie, whether it's the cast or some of the crew, and just say, okay, do you love this or not? And don't hurt my, you'll never hurt my feelings. You know, it's amazing, like this one, this one's great, right? And they're like, mm -hmm. <laughs> And then other ones like XTC's Dear God or, uh, you know, Low by Crack, there's all these songs that you probably never heard before, but they're, they're just timeless and great. Logan and Emma, like out of the main three, that Logan and Emma had the most like, um like real, like emotional, like friendship offset? Oh, offset? You, think? you know, it was, no, it, no, I wouldn't say that at all. It was the group. So you understand, mm -hmm. and I don't know, were you there last night? I was. Okay, I think I might have told the story, but you have to understand, mm -hmm. like, like Logan, Emma, Ezra, and Mae Whitman mm -hmm. had no real high school. They were, they grew up oh, on mm -hmm. set. They never went to prom. 
They never, I don't think they even walk with their graduating class. Mm -hmm. um, and so when they're running to the limo, that's prom. That's prom forever for them. Um, when they uh, are at graduation, they never were capping it. Like, that's what I'm talking about. Like, that, uh, uh, this was their high school. So what message are you hoping that teenagers get from your book when they're reading it? Uh, the message I hope teenagers get, all I hope is that every person that reads the book gets a validation of their own experience. Because, look, I'm looking at three of you. There's you and there's two people behind you. You all, you might have a lot in common, but you also have you, things that are unique to your life. Mm -hmm. And all I hope is that you read it or see the movie and, and, and understand without a shadow of a doubt that what you're going through is real and that, and that there are people that understand it and respect it. It was, it was a pleasure. Oh yeah, it was really fun. <laughs> Thank you.